Okay, so it's 3.45. It's quite early. It's quite it's quite early. Uh, just getting ready to go, having some breakfast, and then we'll be off. So kind of as usual, uh, because it's me, uh, I've literally just missed the bus that takes you to the terminal and I don't think they come for about 10 to 15 minutes each. So I suppose this uh, piece of camera is my way of staying off some time, but uh, yeah, let's go meet the other guys. So it's currently, I think, about 9am. We've had breakfast already and caught up with a few of the people who are here already. And uh, we will be going to AMD's, uh, well not headquarters, their offices in Austin, Texas. I'm actually looking over, I think, the back side of Austin at the moment. Uh, very sunny day, so that's nice. That's obviously a nice change from Britain. But otherwise, uh, we'll be going to AMD's offices really shortly. Hopefully we're going to be taking a look at some Ryzen CPUs as well as having a Radeon Technologies group briefing or something like that as well today. So hopefully we'll find out some more about Vega. Otherwise it's going to be the 5 series, or RX 500 series, and of course obviously the Ryzen CPUs as well, and some MSI motherboards. I am wearing a top that doesn't quite fit me as the only top to brought uh, bring a couple of mediums and mostly XLs and 2XLs, so uh, that's good, but uh, yeah, it should be an interesting day. There's a, a couple of things that MSI are very, very desperate for me to cover that I don't know are necessarily things that you might want to see, but uh, nonetheless uh, I guess we'll kind of take it as we go. So let's head to AMD. Now the reason that I am in Texas is actually thanks to MSI and their new Dragon Squad program. This is mostly, at least for me anyway, going to be trips like this and obviously awesome to be at AMD's at least offices if not headquarters. Now the first thing we had was a speech from a rather senior director, Gerald Youngblood, uh, who was actually really nice, had dinner with us on the second night, uh, is just a great guy and was talking about uh, generally just how AMD wants to push forward the market and that sort of stuff. The next talk was by Antal Tungler and it was really interesting to be able to ask so many questions including why the 500 seri uh, series GPUs have the same core but a different name. That was mostly down to the manufacturing process, they said. Uh, also, I was asking about FreeSync 2, specifically what uh, graphics cards and monitors will support it. The monitors will be new, but the graphics cards, anything that supports FreeSync 1 should support FreeSync 2. And I also asked about FreeSync 2 as well, and just generally uh, what you know what the differences are between 1 and 2. And he said that mainly it's the low frame rate compensation, so at low FPS you'll get uh, frames duplicated on the monitor so that you get a bit of a smoother experience and you also get HDR included as well this is an HDR 10 or Dolby's HDR as those standards are way way bigger than any panel can actually do in fact not all HDR 10 monitors or you know displays are the same so that was actually pretty interesting to find out, but the main way that they do this differently is that uh, instead of tone mapping on the display, which increases the latency massively, uh, they're doing all of the tone mapping in the game engine to speed things up and get better reaction times while still getting that sweet, sweet HDR vision. We also had a quick talk from MSI about their four segments of motherboards, and this is really awesome. It's really great to see them going so heavy on Ryzen, and of course also uh, with their M7 and Crate series 
boards coming up. That'll be very interesting to look forward to. Now, the main talk of this uh, pretty much entire event for me was for uh, from Robert Halleck, who is actually, he used to be a very technical marketing manager for uh, the uh, GPUs. Uh, met him in Sweden for the ARCs for AT launch, and a uh, very nice guy, but also on the, he's now on the CPU side of things, uh, and he's actually very not knowledgeable, so it was great to probe him with a lot of questions, but just a, a few of the notes for the things he said that, uh, of course, he, he does like to compare it to the competition, so the 1600X, he says, is competing with the 7600K, which is Intel's most sold ever CPU, but the 1600X has a significantly better minimum FPS, and especially with, as you can see here, the updates, including disabling the HPET timer, uh, high performance timer, as well as the new Ryzen uh, Windows power plan, and the new BIOS support for running DDR3200. Uh, these are uh, some pretty killer chips, and certainly a pretty good value for money as well. Now, it was really awesome to hear from him uh, about, uh, obviously, the extra coolers as well, including the Wraith Max, which I believe is actually meant to be its standalone product fairly shortly, so if you do want to buy one uh, separately, you can. And he also talked through overclocking, which was really awesome and great to hear from someone who, uh, at the very least, was the technical marketing manager for it, uh, to know exactly how to overclock it, and he actually did a full demonstration. So, he recommended using AXMP if you have an MSI board, or dialing in 3200 speeds, or the highest speed that your memory can go to, uh, just to get the best performance because of the Infinity Fabric kind of setup. Also, you can change the uh, Uncore, or the CPU or SOC voltage, to 1.1 if you're going for a higher overclock. The highest V-Core he recommends is 1.425 volts, otherwise you risk really damaging it. And uh, you can also do ref clock overclocking if you want. Also, upping the memory retry count is a good way to help uh, high memory OCs. Also, CPU load line calibration to keep the voltage steady. He also recommends using the Lynx memory stability test and of uh, Prime 95 or 64 for uh, overall stability testing. While I was there as well, MSI also gave me this rather cool laser cut Dragon Squad box, including a Ryzen 5 1600 as well as uh, 1600X, as well as an MSI Tomahawk B350 board and a cool kind of dragon figurine. Now I'm going to be doing a review of the 1600X, so that's likely going to be also included in. The the 1600 and 1400 review. It was just really great to meet everyone, including the AMD staff, obviously the, the UK squad, as well as obviously Blunty and Wendell, and also TechSource as well, and uh, also thank you for the free meal. Uh, I had literally had steak, uh, I think, every uh, meal that I was there, so that was kind of crazy. Also got to play in uh, the kind of fun room or fun lobby area, including playing some uh, Pac-Man with Wendell, so that was also pretty awesome. Champion here. And, any 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 advice? Any advice for? It's all in the dude? wrist. It's ah. all in the wrist. You know, it's not about the swing. <laughs> <laughs> Back at AMD for day two, and it was really you know awesome to take a look at some of the other demos as well, including uh, a VR demo, uh, Arizona Sunshine, uh, that we're doing with the Vive, and there's also a PSVR demo as well, just hitting little sort of minion things around. Uh, it was also kind of cool to look at some of the non-gaming things. They had a little board that shows you, at least in theory anyway, what goes into uh, an APU, you know, graphics card, CPU chipset, and that sort of stuff. They also had a couple of GPUs as well as a FreeSync demonstration, and of course with all of their performance updates they were very happy to show us their comparison between the 1600k and the 1800x. Now there was also a game battle that went on, this was a League of Legends battle and I'm really more of a GTA, Rocket League and FPS man so for me League of Legends really isn't that fun, it was actually more annoying than anything but still it was nice that the uh, UK squad won Todd, Amy and Josh so uh, yeah that was quite cool. Uh, let me know what you think of uh, you know MOBA games, uh, are they your kettle of fish? I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below and what you sort of 
think of them. But uh, yeah, otherwise it was uh, kind of interesting to, to watch. It was also uh, just great to be obviously at AMD's uh, headquarters, or at least at AMD's offices, rather, uh, meet people, ask lots of awesome questions, and of course just generally thank you to AMD and MSI for bringing us out there. And of course, because it is Murica, you can't really go to Murica without shooting some guns. No matter what you think of all of the, uh, you know, many gun control debates and stuff, it is, uh, you know, just so pretty fun to go to a range and uh, shoot stuff. So uh, here's a little bit of footage of Wendell doing some pew pew in, doing some targets. Uh, we did uh, a PS90 and an AR-15, so that was kind of fun. Obviously, uh, you know, there's the, the shiny AR-15. I think that was like a, a custom one with a uh, $3,000 gun and a $2,000 site or something like that so yeah really really rather expensive but uh, you know still still a lot of fun and uh, you know Wendell doing his devious hands there but uh, yeah no a lot of fun next thing was the duck tour this is a semi amphibious vehicle kind of crazy actually hurt a lot when it went into the water and uh, here's the duck whistles they gave you Bear in mind that this is a completely open bus, so we're traveling at 60 miles an hour down a highway that really felt very similar to one of a skydiving. I mean, I suppose it's half the speed, but certainly a lot of air hitting your face, making it difficult to breathe. Now, when I said that it hurt going into the water, my god, it did. It went in very fast, and we we're sitting in the back of the bus. I almost dropped my camera over the side. Very glad I didn't, but uh, anyway, if you are in Austin, I do recommend checking out a tour like this, or at very least just going to uh, one of the many lakes that are available thanks to the many dams that are there. So. Uh, I do really recommend it. It was awesome to uh, sort of see the sights. Uh, this is obviously very uh, sort of homebound lake. There are a lot of houses on the edge. In fact, I think they said Dennis Quaid has one with a helipad on the side. Uh, but yeah, really cool. Very awesome sights, including some of the massive radio antennas uh, and that sort of thing. And I even got to drive the bus, which is very uh, well strange because it is it's literally a bus. I mean, it's you know you got a steering wheel, you got an accelerator and a brake, uh, and it's a very very slow reaction times. I want to thank MSI not only for the trip, but also for access to their GS43 laptop. It was actually really useful to have such a small and powerful laptop along the way. I did play some uh, games where we were in the layover in Toronto, as well as also on the plane as well. And it genuinely meant that I could edit this video on the plane on the way back so that I didn't have to spend, you know, like six hours plus editing this video just to get it out on, uh, you know, within MSI's schedule. So that was also pretty awesome. I will be doing a full review of it fairly shortly shortly, so if you want to check that out, uh, it will be out fairly shortly, but uh, yeah, otherwise thank you to MSI and AMD. So that's pretty much it, we're still here at AMD's campus obviously, but uh, I thought I'd round it out with, uh, thank you for watching the video, if you want to win up to 18, or one of 18 motherboards, feel free to take a look at the link in the description down below, that can uh, help me out and help you out as well, so thank you to AMD for letting us visit the campus, for MSI for the trip, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one. So as usual, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, then let me know in the comments down below as well. Feel free to share it as well. And of course, do check out the link in the description for the potentially one of 18 motherboards. Also, what is this cereal? Oh my god!